Hi, this is Pete. Welcome to my channel. And here we are with the Arturia Microfreak and my little review of this little synth. First I must say that Arturia hardware synthesizers before the Freak did not thrill me that much. One reason was that the Mini and Micro Brute came with some keyboard that I found highly unnecessary. For me, just a waste of space in my little desktop studio. In fact, for reasons of space, I had to promise myself not to buy any keyboard-equipped devices anymore. My last synth with a keyboard so far was the Korg Monolog. And believe me, since then I have often thought about cutting the keyboard away and it seems that I'm not the only one with such destructive thoughts. In fact, you can find some cool projects on the net where people just took a saw and spent their monologue a more compact design. With a microfreak, Arturia, in my opinion, made a very clever decision. They equipped the little synth with a touch-sensitive PCB keyboard that is able to evaluate poly pressure. Say, each note can have its own aftertouch control. So it's both compact and innovative, and that's the way they got me. When I heard about the Freak, I knew I must have it. However, the keyboard was not the only reason. It was the combination with the paraphonic sound engine using multiple digital oscillators fed into a single analog filter. Um, this kind of hybrid engine is not new. There are many examples and possibly Waldorf has the longest record in this area. Here is one of my favorites which can also be seen as a direct competitor of the Micro Freak, the Waldorf Rocket. But in comparison I must say that the digital oscillator part of the Micro Freak puts the hybrid approach to a new level. There are 12 different oscillator models which all have their specific parameters to shape the particular sound of the model. So, so the range of possible sounds is really huge. And that's perhaps a bit difficult at the beginning. To really make use of this great potential you have to learn how different parameters in different models impact the sound. For me also the sweet spot of some oscillator models is relatively small and not in any case the filter resonance has a pleasing effect on the sound. All in all most of the models are very usable and very well parameterized so finally a great design. But not enough, the oscillator engine has four voices and with one exception all models can be played in paraphonic mode. And Arturia also puts paraphony to a new level because each voice can have its own pressure level control which can be applied to the three oscillator parameters. And each voice has its own amplitude envelope before it goes into the common filter. So you can play monophonic melodies or sequences where you adjust the degree of overlap between notes by the amplitude release parameter. This gives rise to nice complex sounds with lots of motion, great. Paraphony is a great feature of the Freak that can also be found in the Rocket, but in a very simplistic form. There are also similar oscillator models in both synths, like Superwave or oscillator sync waveforms, but in total the variation in the Micro Freak is so much larger. The rocket only has one parameter for shaping the selected waveform in contrast to the three parameters on the Freak. Looking at the analog filter, I must say that I like the 24 dB filter in the rocket a bit more than the 12 dB filter in the Freak. Both filters can be switched between high pass, band pass and low pass, but the filter in the rocket together with the built-in boost circuit, in my opinion, is closer to analog fatness. And very nice. You can also feed external signals into this excellent filter. But here the advantages of the rocket, besides the price tag, are already exhausted. 
All other points go to the free, which also has a great sequencer and a nice arpeggiator, which is more flexible than the simple ARP in the rocket. Furthermore, the FREAK has a comprehensive modulation matrix and a second envelope generator that can also be used as an LFO. And not to forget, on the FREAK you can store your sounds and sequences in up to 256 memory slots. As far as I can see, the FREAK also has a complete MIDI implementation. Almost all parameter changes can be sent and received so you can record your edit sessions on an external sequences for total recall. That's really great. Finally, let's get back to the freaky keyboard. After four weeks of experience, I can say that I like it. But anyway, it should be clear that this keyboard is a compromise. It's good for playing slow melody or chord progressions and it's great for entering notes into the sequencer and it's really fun in combination with the arpeggiator. Also the pressure detection is quite okay, although I face some problems when holding lower notes while changing higher notes. In any case, the keyboard requires sufficient skin contact to the PCB which realizes a capacitive panel. This means that contact with your nails cannot be detected. Say, fast dynamical play, with in, which in particular includes the thumbnail, is not possible. So this would be my only warning for beginners. If you want to learn playing keyboard with your first synthesizer, that's the way I started a long time ago, then the Freak as a one and only instrument may not be optimal, and the Korg monologue, for example, could be a better choice. For all other guys who already have a bunch of synth devices, the Freak is fresh meat with a high fun factor. For demonstration, I have recorded a little audio track from an arpeggiator session. I must say, like most other synths with a mono output, also, the Freak highly profits from some external stereo effects, such as reverb or delay. For the demo, I used a simple ping pong delay from the Line 6 M5, where I control the effect level with a foot pedal, which you cannot see in the video because it's under the table. This control makes it possible that in parts of the jam you can also hear the dry sound from the Freak without any effect. So I hope you will enjoy the jam in the following and if you like the whole video it would be great if you subscribe to my channel. But now it's time to turn off the microphone and just make some noise. Stay tuned. I'm <laughs> sorry.